the Extension Connection. The Morton County staff is with you today. Uh, this is Carla Mickle, 4 Chief Development Extension Agent, and joining me is Liz Larson, Parent Resource Coordinator. And um, we have um, quite a bit of, of really great information for mm -hmm. everyone today. Um, yes. So um, I have some information on camp and a big party up at camp here to celebrate the 50th anniversary of North Dakota 4-H camp. Um, I also am excited because in a week I am leaving with um, two of our shooting sports teams from Morton County to 10 nationals in Grand Island, Nebraska. So yeah, very excited. So we'll visit about that. And then um, I've got quite a bit of information on um, a topic that um, we we really don't want to talk about, but um, we will just to, to be informative and that's the drought and, and how it's affecting our communities. And Liz, what yes. do you have? Yep. Today? So I'm also going to, I brought along some information about the drought as well. Um, specific to stress management and understanding that our farmers, our ranchers, their families, everyone's being affected by that extra stress. Um, along with that, I also brought, uh, we have a couple parenting classes coming up this summer, um, so brought along that information, and yeah, we'll see. we got lots to talk about in the next hour. And Vanessa isn't with us today. Um, she has homemakers at yes. um, the courthouse today. And so homemakers from all over the county are, um, are meeting as um, their annual meeting that they have. And so she sent some information along um, regarding a, a couple classes that she's having here that's coming up shortly. So to visit about camp, um, we are celebrating 50 years North Dakota 4-H camp. And we're going to have Friends of 4-H and a 4-H alumni get together. I'm coming up in Washburn at camp August 19th and 20th. You'll be able to participate in a variety of activities, including the North Dakota State University Barbecue Boot Camp, which Whoa. we're really excited. Yeah, usually um, you have to um, pay quite a bit um, to attend that and eat all the goods that they grill up. I mean, there's good mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> and that's going to be part of the weekend. Um, we are going to have um, a social and silent auction and entertainment. Um, those who want to stay for the weekend will have the opportunity to enjoy a camp-like experience. So um, bunk beds, all that good fun stuff. Fun. <laughs> um, for each alumni and friends can also sample a variety of educational opportunities similar to those that the youth who attend camp experience. Um, we're going to have some archery and shotgun and we're going to do um, the low ropes course and um, all kinds of different funds events. Um, the North Dakota 4-H Foundation owns the camp. It's asking um, items to be donated for the silent auction. You can contact Lynn Moser. She's a North Dakota 4-H Foundation board member. Um, tours of the newly refurbished cabins, the dining hall, the newly constructed Johns Root Center and cabins, and of course the multi-purpose barn that we have. Um, North Dakota 4-H Camp was established in 1967 as the Western North Dakota 4-H Camp, one of two regional 4-H camps, and has become the sole statewide 4-H camp facility. Of course, we sit on 84 acres right between Fort Mandan and Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center, and um, it's a really neat thing to know that during the winter of 1804, Lewis and Clark actually camped on the banks um, between wow. um, Ma Fort Mandan and Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center. So um, we're on a piece of history right there in the middle of North Dakota. So very neat. Um, the celebration is also a fundraiser for the camp. Um, cost for attending the events will be $75 per person for Saturday. And that includes all the fun supplies and all the fun activities that you get to do. Of course, we have to, to purchase some of those supplies. Um, and then the barbecue boot camp is also not. If you want to stay overnight, it'll cost $125. And the registration deadline is set for July 31st. And so if you'd like more information, you want to call 701-231-8569. Or you can log on to ndsu.edu backslash 4-H backslash reunion and um, we would be happy to answer any questions that you might have um, and just a reminder 4-H is the largest and only research-based youth organization in the state and although camp has 4-H in its name it's really open to all youth and we've seen a lot of youth who aren't in 4-H attend camp here mm -hmm. the last couple weeks well so. this hopefully it'll be a fun multi-generational event yes. right so it's current yep. kids that are going through camp people that went to camp when they were younger Yep. Whatever so it'll be, it might be. be interesting and, and it'll be fun to um, reconnect with, you know, camp counselors and um, the original founders of the camp 50 years ago. Um, I know there's some folks here locally um, who had a hand in that camp and, mm -hmm. and getting that going. And so um, they have some really great stories to share. And, and if you know folks that um, attended camp and have some great stories to share, reach out to your local county extension office and share those um, because it sure would be fun to compile mm -hmm. a book or a listing of all of those stories in the fun things or even pictures um so that yeah, we can, you can share dig out your yeah. pictures guys yep so um with that jim is signaling us for a break and we will be right back with the extension connection
Right now, 69. On you- Twitter, Facebook, online, and YouTube. Supertalk1270.com. And welcome back to the Extension Connection. Again, the Morton County Extension staff is with you today. Liz Larson, Parent Resource Coordinator, and myself, Carla Mickle, 4-H Youth Development Extension Agent. And um, we wrapped up here the last segment with um, some information about 4-H Camp. And now um, I've got a couple things. Vanessa couldn't join us today. And so um, we're going to talk a little bit about some food preservation classes that she has coming up. Monday, June 19th, so right around the corner here, there's afternoon and evening classes. They will be held at the Mandan Public Library. There's a class at 3 p.m. and a class at 7 p.m. And it, um, her information says, are you participating in a co-op, gardening, or visiting the local farmer's markets? Come see food preservation equipment and get all of your questions answered before the preservation season begins. So she's going to have some samples of some equipment um, that you use for canning. And she'll talk about some um, safety precautions that you should take while you're canning. Of course, um, it's better to prepare in advance for that. And I've mm-hmm. been out and seen some gardens and those folks that are watering, um, they are looking pretty good. And so there'll be some good opportunities to do some canning here later this morning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think she's kind of covering a whole range. I mean, if you have questions about anything from, you know, canning fruit to veggies to salsas, whatever, really? she'll kind of answer. Yeah. Can be a little bit of a Q&A, a, hopefully. Good deal. Yeah. So um, class size is limited. So you want to register early and you want to register by calling our office at 667-3340. And again, this will be at the Mandan Public Library um, at 3 o'clock p.m. and 7 o'clock p.m. on Monday, June 19th. And it sounds, yeah, they're going to can a little bit of everything and get some information out. That could be pretty handy. Mm-hmm. So, um, the other um, event she has coming up is... Nurse your brain for optimal health. Did you know cognitive decline can be delayed even later in life if you make lifestyle changes? Studies done on brain health have indicated that improving your diet and exercising, your brain can help cognitive activity. If you'd like to make some changes in your diet or lifestyles to improve your brain health, the NDSU Extension Service can sure help you. And there is going to be... Um, an event. It's called Nourish Your Brain for Optimal Health, and it's going to be located at the Alzheimer's Association, 406 West Main Street, Suite 105, here in Mandan, on June 19th, from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Well, she's going to be busy that day. I know. <laughs> you could just spend the whole day with Vanessa. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it's going to, it says here on the poster, cognitive skills refer to our ability to make rapid comparisons, remember unrelated information, and detect relationships. And so, um, again, Vanessa is um, going to be um, holding this event at the Alzheimer's Association um, at 406 West Main Street in Mandan on June 19th from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. And it doesn't say anything about pre-registering, so you can just show on up. You could bring a sack lunch and spend your lunch break learning how to nourish your brain a little bit. Good deal. I should do that. Lately, it's been kind of hit and miss. (laughs) Nourishing your brain or you... I'm I'm just just thinking. (laughs) Thinking, right? Cognitive stuff. Yeah. You need to increase those connections or whatever. Exactly. So... Mm -hmm. Um, well, with that, I'll turn it over to um, Liz, and she's got yeah. some really valuable information on stress management, um, especially during this um, not-so-fun time we're going through mm-hmm. here um, locally. Yes. Yeah, so uh, in the Extension Office, we do have a, a number of resources um, about farming and ranching and tough times. Um, just in general, you know, we have... I know last year we had a bunch of hail, and now obviously we're experiencing uh, the drought, and which may continue for a little while. We'll see what weather brings. Um, But one of the things that, uh, so we have some farm stress fact sheets that you can access either on our website or like I said, stop in the office. Um, So why is it that some farmers, ranchers, just people in general can handle lots of stress and others, um, it might seem like less stress kind of puts them over the edge. Um, So we know that researchers have, who have examined differences between successful and unsuccessful stress stress managers identified kind of three key factors in how well someone um, can deal with that stress. So the first thing is that individuals vary in their capacity to tolerate stress. So for an example, prolonged exertion and fatigue that would only mildly be stressful to maybe a younger farmer or rancher may prove to be a little bit more difficult if it's an older farmer or rancher or someone that has some heart problems or health issues. Um, while part of an individual's stress 
stress tolerance, I guess, is an inborn piece of it. It a crucial part depends on the quality of coping skills practiced as well. So it's not just you know who you are as a person or your personality, um, but also the coping skills that you you know find and then also utilize. Uh, the second factor is feeling in control. So. Uh, successful stress managers know how to accept those stressors that are out of their control. Obviously, when we're talking about farmers and ranchers, there's a lot that's out of their control. Yep. The weather, um, stark, stock market, you know, their height, all of those kinds of things. Um, so we really have to look at how to effectively manage those stressors that are in your control. You know, recognize that you can deal with your muscle tension or um, temper flares, flare-ups, or how you're record keeping, you know, those are all factors that you can control in your, your farm and ranch business. Uh, the third is that the attitudes, perceptions, and meanings that people assign to events determine a large part of their stress levels. Um, so stress can be defined as an energy that's kind of blocked in, or in a chaotic state, that kind of thing. Um, so if you can follow some techniques to again, gain that sense of control. You might, again, say, I'm in the farm and ranch business. I have zero control over what's going on with this drought. Um, but identifying those factors that you can control. I can control my breathing or, you know, how I do stress management, how I interact with the, my loved ones, all of that kind of thing. Um, so we break it down into kind of three different types of control. You can control events, control your attitudes, and control your responses to the stress. Um, so controlling some situations, like I mentioned a couple already, but one is plan ahead. Don't procrastinate. So, um, you know, if you have a down day or whatever, you're making sure you're keeping up your books or um, replacing machinery parts during the off season, that kind of thing. Um, before the harvest, discuss who can be available to run for parts, care for livestock, have different roles. Um, set priorities about what has to be done today and what can actually wait until tomorrow. So making sure you have realistic expectations for yourself every day. Sometimes it's a matter of saying no to those extra commitments um, <clears throat> that you really don't have time to do. Uh, do things like simplify your life. If you can do things like reduce your financial dependence on others, um, even just re reducing other things to kind of simplify how many things you need to keep track of. Another tip would be to schedule stressful events within your control, such as elective surgeries. Um, so lots of things that you can control, you know, as far as those events. Um, and then the second way of finding some control during these, these times is to control your attitudes. Uh, so tips with that would be seeing the big picture. So an idea is, I'm glad that the tire blew out here rather than on that next hill. You know, just changing that perspective um, so you can shift it to a more positive attitude. Um, list all the stresses you have, you now have. Identify those you can change. And then identify the ones that you just need to accept. Um, shift your focus from worrying to problem solving. So a lot of times, I know I'm one that I worry about stuff. And you can worry and worry and worry about something you can't change or it's like you spend all the time worrying instead of actually sitting down and problem solving through it. Uh, think about how to turn your challenges into a new opportunity. Um, notice what you have accomplished rather than what you failed to do. So patting yourself on the back, right? Or identifying those for other people in your business or your family. And then set realistic goals and expectations daily and really give up trying to be so perfect, right? Mm -hmm. um, so again, being, being nicer to yourself almost, uh, changing that attitude. And I like that set realistic goals. I know a lot mm -hmm. of times and, and, you know, you set goals and you aim so high um, that they are not achievable at all. And so mm -hmm. you, you got to make them smaller goals, really. Yep. I know I've had uh, somebody that... I know pretty well that she said, okay, you know, we were talking about a whole list of things they had to do, and I had like 15 things or something, and she said, pick three. You, you get go. three. Just yeah. pick three <laughs> and kind of start there every time. Um, the third way that you can gain some control is controlling your responses. So doing things like focus on relaxing your body and your mind, um, taking walks, um, doing, it, doing things slowly, just taking a, yeah, a little meditation or whatever it is. Turn off for a minute. Just sit in your car after you turn it off and just have an extra minute or two of 
relaxing breathing, whatever it is. Tune into your body. Um, don't push through all that pain and stress. You know, notice how your body's uh, reacting. Notice any early signs of stress and try and let those go. Taking care of your body. Limit your intake of coffee, sodas, teas, that caffeine kind of it feels like it's helping in the short term, but long term, it's going to yep. push you over. Um, avoid smoking cigarettes, using alcohol or drugs, sleeping pills, those kinds of things. Um, it can, again, maybe feel like a, a solution right now, but long term aren't going to be as great. So take a break, climb down from your tractor, do a favorite exercise, look at the sunset, whatever you need to do can uh, control in those responses to stress that you have again. Um, so keep in positive thoughts. You can and will succeed. This is a tough time right now. Reaching out to your networks of people that are supportive, all those kinds of things. Um, so with that, we'll talk a little bit more kind of about the drought and the effects going on. Carla has some of the ag side of it as well uh, when we return from a quick break with Extension Connection. Right now, 69. The Red River Farm Network. Ag News is here on Super Talk 1270. All right, we are back with Extension Connection. This is Morton County. I'm Liz Larson with the Parent Resource Center. We also have Carla Mickle here as our 4-H Youth Development. Is that right? Yeah. The posi- oh, okay, yeah. good. I was yeah. like, all right. <laughs> um, so before the break, we were talking about kind of the the drought and the reality that that's putting a lot of stress on our farmers, our ranchers, um, families, and you know everyone that's affected by that piece of our industry around here. Um, and so I wanted to mention a couple other things, really just kind of the signs of stress and the symptoms. Um, everyone's probably heard or read these before, but uh, we were saying during the break that it's just as important to hear it again, right? Because right. you sometimes you might be feeling something and thinking, oh, I'm, you know, I'm getting sick or this or that. And it's like, oh my gosh, no, this is my body saying we're stressed here. Yep. Um, so the physical symptoms, there's tons of them. It could be you know, noticing your muscles, are they super loose and fatigued or maybe super tight? Maybe you carry a lot of tension in your shoulders or your back, uh, your head. So you could be kind of getting those headaches or on the opposite end of it, maybe it's just really clear and you're not able to focus very much. Um, a lot of people will have stomach aches. You can get a really upset stomach or having some breathing issues, maybe you're having a lot more shallow breathing. And then also looking at your energy level. Um, is your energy level good or is it pretty low? You're just feeling fatigued, feeling kind of down and dumpy all the time. Um, so lots of those physical symptoms that we can recognize. Also behavioral symptoms. So when we're under stress, sometimes we have trouble relaxing. We have trouble um, concentrating, uh, having trouble making decisions or sleeping. And when you think about, you know, in a stressful time when you're having to make big decisions day to day of, you know, what are we going to do um, with this drought and are you going to sell cattle or keep or whatever, um, if you're, you know, your mental health and your behavioral symptoms are kind of being affected by this stress, you need to be aware of it. Uh, also, those emotional symptoms. So a lot of times there's, you know, lots of generations involved, lots of family members are working side by side. Um, but never, nevertheless, too much togetherness and a lack of privacy or personal time can lead to some tension. We all know that. Um, so emotional warning signs you can look for, increased irritability, uh, maybe being more impatient, lots of frustration, any kind of depression, maybe an angry blow up. Um, difficulty controlling emotions or withdrawing from others, not really um, having a positive outlook or not interacting with your people uh, in your life. So that also leads to those relationship symptoms. Um, so you can, you know, make sure you're checking in on the other people in your family, the other people that you're farming or ranching with, and um, those conflicts might come up just because of the stress and the stressful situation. Uh, so we always read those symptoms. Not only hopefully you can recognize them in yourself, but also if you're seeing somebody else, if you have a family member, somebody in your community that is maybe being affected by this stressful time, um, being aware of it and just asking them, hey, how are you doing? 
you know, I'm seeing this in you. You're not yourself. Um, people appreciate when you just say it. I know it can be uncomfortable to talk to somebody about feelings or emotions or all that kind of stuff, but um, come from the perspective of, I know it's a tough time. This drought is hard on everybody. You know, you're not, you're not acting yourself. Let's talk about it kind of thing. Um, so that's kind of that stress management and recognizing stress in this time of the drought and, and what we have going on in this part of the state. Um, Carly, I think you had some other things to touch on as far as the drought. I do. And I'm um, just, you know, what Liz was um, going over with everyone, too, is um, some publications, actually, that we have in the Extension Office. Mm-hmm. If you're interested in um, some information you want to take home or perhaps you're concerned about a neighbor or um, a family member, um, please reach out to us. Um, we have um, quite a bit of information um, farming and ranching in tough times. We've got some stress information. And please reach out to us. Um, we mm-hmm. would be happy to do what we can to help you out or to find mm-hmm. any resources to do so or mail it out yep. or email or whatever is exactly. easiest to get yeah. it to you and sometimes it's really hard to ask for help because you don't mm-hmm. necessarily want other people to know that you are at that point where you need help and and really that's what we're here for if we can help get that to you we will so yeah um first of all I, I have some things here on agriculture and I'm not going to um, claim that I am an expert by any means um, on on anything ag related. Um, however, there was some great information that has come out from NDSU. And so I thought I would bring it along and share it with everyone. If you have additional information, um, you can sure call our office and we can um, connect you with folks within our community um, who can answer additional questions for you. Um, we would be happy to do that. Um, the first one I have is testing livestock water quality critical during drought. Um, Drought conditions can compromise water quality in ponds and dugouts, um, causing elevated levels of salts, minerals, and bacteria. We've been talking about blue-green algae in Mm -hmm. our stock ponds and different things, and and just to be aware of things. And um, Miranda Meehan says, because the majority of the state is experiencing some level of drought, we recommend that livestock producers test water quality prior to livestock turnout. Um, and this is um, North Dakota State University Extension Service Livestock Environmental Specialist um, Miranda Meehan. And she said the risk of problems is greater in areas of the state that had poor water quality in 2016. Um, Poor water quality can impact livestock health negatively, according to Gerald Stucka, um, NDSU Extension Veterinarian and Livestock Stewardship Specialist. At a minimum, it can result in decreased water consumption, reducing feed intake and gains, he says. Um, However, elevated levels of some salts and bacteria can result in severe illness and even death. Um, NDSU veterinarian toxicologist Michelle Monstrom recommends water sources be tested for total dissolved solids, or you might hear them ca- be called as TDS, um, sulfates and nitrates. Um, TDS measures salts. These levels should be less than 5,000 parts per million um, for more, most cases of grazing livestock. Elevated levels of TDS, or again, total dissolved solids, may not be harmful to livestock health. However, due to our geology in North Dakota, water with high TDS often have high sulfate levels. Um, High levels of sulfate can reduce copper availability in the diet. Elevated levels of sulfates may cause loose stool, whereas very high levels of sulfate can induce central nervous system problems in um, a brain disorders in cattle. Um, Sulfate recommendations are less than 500 points per million for calves and less than 1,000 points per million for um, adult cattle. Um, Nitrate in itself is not toxic to animals, but at elevated levels, it causes nitrate poisoning. Water sources are at risk of contamination if they receive runoff from fields and confined feeding operations that contain elevated levels of nitrogen. Water with elevated nutrient levels also are at high risk for blue-green algae blooms in periods of hot, dry weather. Um, Some species of blue-green algae um, contain toxins that can be deadly when livestock and wildlife consume them. Monitoring water quality throughout the grazing season is important because the quality changes in response to climate and environmental conditions, Meehan says. Um, What is especially important is to keep a close eye on water quality during drought when using a shallow water source and sources with a history of water quality issues. And we've actually had quite a bit of testing. I was on a conference call last Mm -hmm. week. um, and There's quite a bit of water testing um, being done right now and and, um, producers requesting that. Um, Many commercial laboratories in the NDSU Veterinary and Diagnostic Laboratory provide testing for livestock water quality and specialized testing. The cost of a basic water quality test is approximately $25 
$25. You can contact a county office of the NDSU Extension Service for a list of commercial laboratories in the state. If you're concerned about livestock diseases caused by contaminated drinking water, you want to contact your local veterinarian, the NDSU Extension Veterinarian, or the NDSU Veterinarian Diagnostic Laboratory, and um, the number is 701-231-8307. Um, there's some additional publications, and I have a couple of them here with me today. Uh, more information on livestock water quality is available. Um, in the following Extension publications, we have livestock water requirements, livestock water quality, nitrate poisoning of livestock, and um, a publication on blue-green algae. Again, we've been, that came out a lot and it came out on the conference call here um, that I had this week as well um, with um, the emergency management team here from North Dakota. So again, um, it's important to monitor your livestock water and um, if you have any questions on that, you can call the extension office. We'd be happy to um, point you in the direction or give you additional information on being able to test your livestock water, um, make sure that it's still healthy for your, your cattle. So, mm -hmm. um, One of the other things that they've been talking about, and we've seen a lot of um, folks um, at the sale barn, um, this publication or um, news release actually came out here a few days ago. Um, it's called Beef Talk, Wean Early and Save 25% of Pasture Forage. Um, and this is by Chris Ringwall. He's a beef specialist with the NDSU Extension Service. And he says the current dryness affecting the land has caused all livestock producers to review options um, for um, pasture and forage. For some in a drought situation, the only real solution is, solution is rain. Of course, we're, we're praying for rain. Mm -hmm. um, but producers need to take charge when the season is dry or wet. The Dickinson Research Extension Center has and will continue to manage during drying times. The center is in a semi-arid climate and dryness is not a stranger. Managing grazing time and stocking rate is critical. As a result, the center has measured available biomass in the range when cows have their calves removed in mid-August versus early November. The thought is that removing calves would lessen the impact on the production unit during times when rain is scarce. First, no drought plan works if there is no grazing plan to start with. To begin a properly designed grazing system that does not put undue pressure on grass is a priority. While those wetter than average years tempt producers to increase stock numbers, years like this remind us overstocking is never a good idea. You want to stick to properly planned grazing systems and appropriate adjustments. And um, we are being queued for a break, and so we're going to go back for a break, and I'll finish talking about here um, weaning early and saving on your pasture forage. Right now, 73. Dave Ramsey is heard here. Super Talk 1270. And welcome back to the Extension Connection. Before the break, um, we were visiting a little bit about grazing and weaning your calves early. And um, just to finish up there, that conversation um, discussion is not about what grazing system is best, though. The main point is to have some kind of grazing system in place. The next step is to plan on orderly herd reductions that fit the operation. Um, this actually focuses on weaning as an option to manage dry pastures later this summer. Center research shows um, weaning calves in August lowers the nutritional requirements of the cow herd because dry cows eat less than lactating cows. Center animal scientist um, Doug Landblum notes weaning calves early has a positive impact on growth and efficiency during the backgrounding phase, improves cow body condition score, reduces range forage utilization, and shortens the lifetime feeding period of steers held for retained ownership. Data collected by Landbloom showed significant benefits of early weaning. At the center, the body weight of cows whose calves were weaned in mid-August was 1,296 pounds in August, and the cows still weighed 1,311 pounds in November. Cows with calves not weaned early weighed 1,333 pounds in August, but lost significant weight nursing calves on dry pasture and weighed 1,197 pounds in November. Um, so what they're saying is cows with calves that were weaned early gained 15 pounds and utilized 28% less forage biomass than the cows whose calves were not weaned early. The cows with calves that were we not weaned early lost 136 pounds of body weight. Um, so some really great information here from Chris Wingwall. Um, they talk about point of caution. Although early wean calves perform very well post weaning, lightweight calves still do not bring enough dollars to offset the production costs associated with the cow. Um, the center calves weighed just shy of 400 pounds in August. A 400 pound calf has tremendous potential to grow once feed is located and appropriate arrangements made. The question of selling the calf or retaining ownerships needs to be asked. Um, 
With any drought management tool, do not wait until forage availability is critical for the herd. Implement drought plans sooner than later. Um, and then he will share more here in the upcoming weeks. But this just came out June 8th, again, from Chris Ringwall from the Dickinson Research Extension Center. So um, some really good information on pasture forage. Mm-hmm. So, Especially uh, as a lot of our producers are out looking at options, you yep. know. We don't know when all the rain will come, so that's the thing. Kind of have to have some kind of a plan in place. Again, hopefully reducing stress if you kind of feel informed and that mm-hmm. you have a plan. Yep, and you know where to reach out for that information. Mm-hmm. I know, um, you know, FSA office has been busy, and you know all the um, farm service agencies and, and mm-hmm. um, farm credit services and, and all kinds of places. So reach mm-hmm. out. And um, there's another um, article that came out today. And um, it's Feedless Connects Livestock Feed Buyers and Sellers. Um, This just came out here this morning before we came on air, and so I'm reading it from my cell phone for you. Um, But many North Dakota producers are experiencing the effects of the drought conditions on their operations. In addition, late spring frosts and plant pests have stressed the 2017 hay crop. Farmers and ranchers who have feed stuff such as hay or corn for sale can list it on North Dakota State University's feed list website, which is designed to connect feed sellers and buyers. And producers also may list pasture they have for rent. And the feed list can be found at www.ag.ndsu.edu backslash feed list. It shows what each seller has for sale, how the feed is stored, large round bales, small bales, etc., and the seller's contact information. Prospective buyers can select what they want to buy and contact the sellers. Using the feed list is free of charge. Anyone who wants to buy or has feed to sell can complete an online form at the site. Those who need entry help should contact their county office of the NDSU Extension Service. Um, All entries will be deleted automatically after 90 days. Buyers and sellers who no longer need the feed list services before that should contact the feed list coordinator, who is Elizabeth Cronin um, at NDSU, to have their entry removed. The feed list website also has links to similar services in other states and information on needed and available feed lots and truckers. And um, Carl Dolan says that they wish all producers the best during this difficult time, and they hope the feed list can be used as a valuable resource for buyers and sellers of feeds. And for more information about managing cattle in a drought, producers should contact their county office of the NDSU Extension Service. And the feed list has been available during feed shortages since the late 1970s. And again, um, just for that website address, the feed list, you can log on to www.ag dot ndsu dot edu backslash feed list and that'll show you what each seller has for sale and how it's stored and mm-hmm. and um you can make some connections there for some additional feed so good good connection spot yep. right exactly when you're in so, need of r- some resources yep so but liz to wrap yeah. up here our, our yeah segment. i was gonna share a little bit just about kind of what we have with the parent resource center coming up our summers aren't quite as busy just because people, you know, are out having fun and and busy with their families doing fun things on the lake or the river or whatever. Um, but wanted to highlight a couple things that we have going on. So in August, we're going to do a series called Building Strong Families. So we're going to talk about um, dealing with uh, family strengths, communication, dealing with discipline. Uh, that'll be on Tuesday evenings at the Mandan Library from 6.30 to 7.30. And I do ask that you call and register for that so that I know you're coming. Um, It's August 1st, 8th, and 15th. Um, So not a very long series, just three nights that we'll get to kind of connect with other parents, talk about family strengths and how do you build up your own family. Um, We also have a couple of the Parents Forever classes. So those are that research-based program. It's a one-time four-hour course for parents that are going through a divorce or have been through a divorce or maybe you're never married but are separating from the other parent. Um, So there's two options for that, Thursday, July 6th from 5 to 9 p.m., and that's in Mandan as well, or Tuesday, August 22nd from 5 to 9 p.m., So if you want to register for either of those, you can uh, call the office 667-3342 or go online to the website and um, track down the online registration that way. And then the other thing I'll highlight is that I've been partnering with First Choice Clinic over in Bismarck, and they've been great to work with. They do 
a lot of life skills classes for people that are using their services or just people in the public. Um, so if you are expecting a, a new baby or maybe have an infant or toddler already, um, those classes are going on through June and Thursday mornings at 11 o'clock. So I'll be over there on June 22nd and doing some fun programming stuff. And if you want to, I think in July they're going to move to Wednesday afternoons. So if that fits your schedule better. Um, but you can call the First Choice Clinic at 701-751-4575 to learn more about those skills classes. So, yeah, a few things going on this summer. Um, hopefully people are out having fun and doing lots of fun things. Um, I was going to mention a couple ideas on kind of how to entertain your child without blowing all your money this summer. Um, that's something that I know some parents have uh, been having concerns of, right? It costs a lot to send them to the movies on their hot days or the pool every week or whatever. Um, so I was going to highlight a couple things from one of our extension service personal and family finance specialist, Carrie, over in Fargo. Um, some ideas that she had mentioned was things like the library. So look for summer reading programs. Maybe you can win some prizes, right? So you don't have to buy new toys. They just win their own. Um, there's also a lot of free movie rentals. So Redbox is cheap, but even free is, you know, an even better deal. Um, so the cost of going to the movies really adds up. Um, if you have, you know, more than one child especially, so Maybe instead hang a sheet in the backyard, use a projector and laptop, host an outdoor show. Maybe you can get some of the neighborhood together. That It'd be kind of like fun. So much I fun. know. Huh. When well, we haven't had too bad of mosquitoes yet this not year, yet. being that it's dry, so not a bad idea, right? Mm -hmm. um, also, putting your kids in summer sporting activities is a great way to keep them active. Although we know that this can also be an expense, right, for families. So. Maybe you teach your child or children different outdoor games from your own childhood. Um, red light, green light, Simon Says, um, all those kinds of things, right? You can get, again, neighborhood kids or your, your kids' friends over. Um, so maybe you don't have the time or money to take your kids to the city pool every day, right? That adds up. So think about a water balloon fight or putting your sprinkler out. Um, obviously, we recognize some of our area is under a water restriction. So make sure you're checking the news and checking online to see if we're following those restrictions right now. But that could be a positive alternative. Um, yeah, or if your child only goes a couple times through the summer, maybe it's a better deal to do single passes versus getting a full summer, you know, punch card or something like that. Um, so just ideas to kind of think about. You don't have to spend money on everything this summer. There's lots of free activities to keep kids busy. Um, and I think with that, we are wrapping up for this week's session. And Morton County will be back in a couple weeks here with Extension Connection. And until then, have a great day.